Welcome to London. Today we will have on tour of a World War II Royal Navy light cruiser. The museum ship located on River Thames close to Westminster Bridge. HMS Belfast, or His Majesty's Ship Belfast, was built by Harlington Wolf in Belfast Shipbuilding Yard in Northern Ireland, the same yard where the Titanic was constructed. During the tour, we will explore the nine decks of the ship. This map will help you navigate the ship. The ship was commissioned into the Royal Navy on the August 5, 1939, just before the outbreak of the World War II. As we move to the ship, you can see the places where the ship has been during its 25 years of service. During the service, the HMS Belfast take part in World War II and Korean War. Belfast played a key role in protecting Arctic convoys, delivering essential supplies to the Soviet Union. She participated in the North Cape Battle 1943, which led to sinking on the German battleship Scharnhorst. During D-Day operations, Belfast provided naval convoy support bombarding German positions to support Allied troops landing on Normandy. Let's explore the ship museum. Before we dive deep into the ship, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. It's helped me understand that you find this video interesting. We move in from quarterdeck to ship's kitchen called Galley. The crew size of HMS Belfast varied depending on her role and era in which she served. But historically it was between 750 and 900 people. You can see 21 inch or 533 mm torpedo. The distinctive white and red square pattern on the floor of HMS Belfast is not just a decorative choice but serves as a practical purpose related to the ship's operations. The contrasting colors enhance visibility in dimly lit areas, crucial for safe ammunition handling. Also, the pattern marks pathways and guides the crew. This is a fridge with the meat. The kitchen is huge. Imagine it makes food for about 1,000 people every day. This is a bakery. This is a living quarter. Here is another part of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. 
This machine peels the potato. This is a giant cooking pot. The stainless steel door to the left is ovens. From this place people take the food. The Galay Museum section has special sound to add some atmosphere. For HMS Belfast, which had a crew of around 750 to 900 during her active service, the Galay likely employed between 10 to 20 personnel. After Galay, we're moving down to boiler and engine rooms. This is a cruise bathroom. We are stepping into the forward boiler room. This condition of the mechanism is not typical, it's open special for visitors. These corridors and stairs are so small and narrow, but this section of the ship was a workplace for a crew of 100 to 150 personnel. When you move through museum, the narrator tells us the history of the warship. <laughs> This is another mechanism open special for museum visitors. All four of these compartments are located within what is known as the armor box under layers of thick steel armor. The main belt of this armor runs up and along both sides of the protective armor, keeps the ship's vital systems and backups safe from enemy fire. The four compartments are arranged together along the center of the ship within the armored box. The machinery in the boiler and engine rooms works together in pairs, but is located in separate compartments. This means that if any of the compartments were hit by a shell or torpedo, others would keep working. This is the third step down to the boiler room. Belfast engines were driven by high pressure, superheated steam. Powerful fans forced air into the boiler room from outside the ship, creating an oxygen rich atmosphere. This air, the result was an intensely hot fire that could reach temperatures of up to 2000 degrees Celsius. This is the boiler. It makes steam from water both sides of the furnace and began to heat up. By the time it had finished, it had become superheated steam. The superheated steam was then sent from the boiler room to the engine room at a very high pressure. This is the engine order telegraph or EOT, also known as a chat burn. The bridge pilot used this device to direct the engine room to set the specific speed. Structures behind you while you're looking at this screen. They are 
shaped like a giant metal. The boiler rooms at HMS Belfast power the ship. The pipeline labyrinth is used to transfer water and steam. We are moving out from boiler room. This door leads us to the engine room. This is another cruise bathroom. In case of emergency situations, the crew can use this electrical pump. It's portable, it can be moved anywhere in the ship. This is a deck diagram of the ship. We are located on deck number 3 below the main deck. This is a ship's workshop. Later we will see that closer. Moving down deck number 4. You can see the heart of HMS Belfast, it's a steam turbines. The pathways are so narrow. These throttles used for controlling engine. Another set of controlling devices. The steam is directed into the engines by the throttles. These are the have four sets of turbines. Immediately to the right of the screen is the small astern. Here you can see a transmission gears open special for visitors. And this is open turbine. But that could only be kept up for short periods of time and used up the ship's fuel oil very quickly. 
Using the more economical cruising turbine, Belfast could travel from Britain to Sri Lanka before needing to fill up its tanks again. This is HMS Belfast forward engine room. You can see one of the ships Parsons being... We are moving to the workshop we thought before. If something happened with the warship in the sea, then the crew members can fix it. We are moving to the main deck. Laundry. This is a mail room from this room. Crew members was able to send the letters to their families. Ship's church. Dear hear there. First Hill Scouts. Your time is up. Make your way to the quarter deck. That's the first part of the ship where you came on board. That's the first hill. Scouts to the quarter deck. Make your way. Um. This is the kitchen we already saw. This is a dentist cabinet on ship. We are moving to ship's hospital or sick bay. Pharmacy. Examination room. Surgery. X-ray. Restroom. Bathroom. We are moving out of the sick bay. Thomas Brown was a Royal Navy sailor who served during World War II and was awarded the Jewish Medal for his bravery. Frankenstein the cat was the real cat on HMS Belfast and served as ship's mascot. Provision room.
This is a eating area for sailors. It calls mess desks. We are going down to the shelves room. You can see an automatic mechanism for loading shells from the shells room to the turrets. This system was the quite sophisticated for its time. These shells don't have any explosive materials anymore, so it's safe to go near to them. We move into another shell's room. There are four turrets on ship and each of them has its own shell room. We are moving now to the main decks. Ship has room dedicated to World of Warships video game. You can try the game in this room. We are moving to lower steering position when you can try to steer the ship. This is transmission station responsible for communication between ships. The guard compass room is essential navigation instrument used to determine the ship's true heading. This is a storage for tobacco and soap. This is actual lower steering position. This room, also known as Auxiliary or Emergency Steering Station, served as a critical backup to the main steering position located on the bridge. This place can be used during combat situations. We just saw an attraction for museum visitors, where they could control a ship in a simulator. But this is a real steering room.
This is a place where kids can play. And we are still climbing to main deck. Be careful when you visit these kind of museums. The stairs and warships and submarines are not typical. It's easy to slip and get injured. This equipment is part of radar system. This crane is used for loading and unloading supplies and for lifting floodplains, which extend the ship's ability to locate the targets. The warship has 12 4 inch naval gun MK16. On HMS Belfast, they mounted in twin turrets, allowing them to deliver a significant volume of fire. This is storage for ammunition. This is electrical equipment used for turrets. We are moving to the front side of the ship, or for castle. Do you remember when we went into the shells room down in the body of the ship? That steward is loading shells from that room into the gun. The weight of this anchor is about 10 tons. Let's go inside the turret. The turret weighs about 160 tons. We are moving to the Admiral's Bridge. We are stepping into the Admiral's Bridge. This is the name of the shipbuilding yard. We are moving to the flag deck near to the electrical equipment.
this device is using for sending signals between ships in the night time. I try to guess what this device is for. Can you write in the comment what do you think about it? A beautiful London view from the flight deck of the HMS Belfast. During combat operations, this tower controlling artillery guns. And this is a radar system. We are slowly moving to the exit from the museum. If you enjoyed the tour, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.